servant of God, Indica, shall now take communion with the body and blood of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Indica, a game, or perhaps better describes an experience about schizophrenia, God, the devil, love and loss, the bitter cold, and losing your religion. So, I don't usually do this, but I played a movie game. Because let's be upfront about this, this isn't much of a game per se, as it is an interactive story. Now, I usually swerve on these games, but Indica caught my attention because, well, the trailer for this game is so good. Seriously, go watch it and tell me you're not hooked. That trailer editor deserves a raise. But secondly, because I've never really played a game about a nun with schizophrenia going on a journey in the bitter cold of the Russian winter. And third, well, I empathize with the main character a little bit. Hey look, that's me. So let's dive into the Indica experience. In this game, you play as Indica, a young nun living her life in an abbey. However, she's having difficulty fitting in. None of the other nuns... <laughs> okay, fine. None of the other nuns like her because she keeps uh, having little episodes during the services. You see, Indica is suffering from a bad case of 21st century schizoid nun. Okay, that, that's the last one, I promise. All these nun jokes are becoming a bad habit. But yeah, she sees weird things that aren't really there, and this is one of those games where the character can hear the narrator of the game. No, it's not the most original premise ever, but in this one the narrator is the devil, I guess, so that's something. Anyway, she hears a rather adversarial voice in her head causing her to zone out a lot. The journey begins when Indica is tasked with delivering an important letter. And that's the call to adventure, so let's get going. So what's gameplay like? Well, for the first bit of the game, you're stuck doing menial chores in an abbey, and when I say menial, I mean it. This game is really trying to hammer home how boring it is to be a nun when it makes you bring water back and forth from a well to a barrel for like five minutes straight. And you're going to do a lot of walking in this game, as I'm sure you might have guessed. Indica is relatively mobile though, you'll be doing a bit of light climbing and platforming. It's not as dull as it sounds though, because during these sequences you're often having a little verbal battle with either the narrator or another character, and these conversations serve to flesh out the story and philosophy of the game. Throughout the course of the game you'll also have to do a fair amount of puzzles, which vary quite a bit actually. You might find yourself operating a crane at a factory to navigate through an old train yard, or dodging fish on a rotating platform like it's your job, or you might find yourself operating another crane, just picking up bridges willy nilly. Also, I hate to admit it, but this puzzle took me way longer than it should have. There's also a few motorcycle driving segments, which are, uh, well, they're, uh, they're something. And then, you may have noticed from the trailer, this game will occasionally cut to 2D pixel graphic sections. These are all sequences from Indica's childhood, and they kind of serve to tell a story of her life and to break up the main gameplay. And to top it all off, there's a point system where you can level up your faith. And it does nothing. And the game outright tells you that it does nothing. Hmm, I wonder what this game is trying to say. Nevertheless, if you want to go out of your way to collect all the faith points and explore the world thoroughly, the game isn't stopping you. All in all, I think this game does a decent job of mixing it up, but ultimately this is more of a cinematic story-focused game, so just keep that in mind when you're deciding whether or not you may get this. So the world of Indica is rooted in her own, but with a heightened sense of scale. You're a nun living in an abbey, but that abbey is monumental. And in fact, basically everything in this game is. The sense of scale is all distorted, with normal buildings being gigantic skyscrapers, church bells that are as large as regular churches, and even things like fish have been scaled up. It's not really clear if this is simply how Indica perceives the world due to her condition, or if it's just a world of exaggerated reality. Not quite surrealism, not quite steampunk, but there's certainly a fair amount of steampunk influence here. Overall, the presentation of the world is top-notch. It's gigantic, unreachable, uncaring, and bleak. Because, well, that's kind of the story of the game. Alright, spoilers here. I'm not going to outright tell you every story beat, but this is a story-focused game, so if you want to play it, just skip this part, because it's going to ruin it. You've been warned. So the story is Indica has never really liked her life in the Abbey, but doesn't really have options or anything to do about that dang old voice in her head. The voice of the devil. Anyway, like I said earlier, she takes off an important mission to deliver a letter, somehow knowing this journey will change her life. On her journey, she'll contend with the narrator slash devil, especially in these interesting puzzle sections where the environment will be split and she has to navigate with the power of prayer. During these sections, the devil is relentlessly shit-talking her and she can ignore the voices in her head by praying. 
Anyway, along the way, she sees a girl in trouble and contemplates rescuing her, but more or less chickens out, only to be saved by this guy, Ilya, who's actually an escaped convict himself. Due to circumstances, he kidnaps Indica, and now their stories are kind of tied together. He's borderline dead because of a withered arm, so Indica takes pity on him and decides to help him find the Kudets, because Ilya saw in a vision from God that his arm could be healed by this mythical religious object. So basically the entire game is this journey, and along the way we get the backstory and philosophy of the characters. I would say the main narrative theme of this game is Indica is struggling with her faith. She's really just unsure of what it all means, and she's constantly plagued by this voice in her head that she desperately wants to go away that's leading her down the wrong path. During her misadventures, the devil will eventually tell her he'll only go away when she no longer wants him to. Eventually, Ilya and Indica end up finding the Kudets, and surprise, surprise, there are no miracles. Then, the game comes to an abrupt and sort of anticlimactic close when Indica has the Kudets and realizes it's all a sham, and she finally rids herself of the voice. Now, ultimately, what this ending means, I think, is it's just a metaphor for pulling away from religion entirely. Not accepting the dichotomy of good and evil paths in life, neither siding with God or the devil, but rather walking away from it all and just being yourself. Hey, you know, it's not the most original ending, but that's the theme of the game. And you could have guessed it from the art for the game's title. You see these halos around the other nuns? In the orthodox tradition of iconography, and in much religious art in general, these serve as an indication of sainthood, and we see Indica is conspicuously lacking. Alright, so is this game worth playing? Hard to say. I definitely have my criticisms. For a game that hits you with this scene in the first five minutes, It really doesn't deliver on the promise of playing as a nun with brain problems. Indica is pretty logical and intelligent, and she never really makes any crazy decisions. Besides that little moment, there's really only a few puzzles that might indicate that Indica is crazy. Like this one puzzle where you're in an MC Escher type room that folds in on itself, and you can see yourself walking around in the other rooms, but you're a spooky devil. I really would have liked the game to go harder in this department. There's also a lot of rough transitions between scenes, and I'm not sure if it's intentional. Although I am playing this game day one, and we know how release day games are nowadays. Also, the narrative is a little tired. Despite having never seen a story with this particular setup, the payoff is pretty generic. However, with all my criticisms, there was a lot I did like about the game. Indica is quite likable as a protagonist, and all her internal conversations are well written and interesting. The voice acting is all around fantastic as well. The game has serious style with the world and environments as mentioned earlier, with a real cinematic flair. There's a lot of really clever shots. Like, look at this one early on in the game to give you a sense of how disoriented Indica is. And look at this opening credit sequence that just oozes with personality. Would play an extremely important, perhaps critical, role in the puzzles are mostly engaging as well, giving my brain a little tickle with some non-traditional solutions. And the story is very thought-provoking and adult. But, fair warning, this game has some pretty brutal subject matter in it, so if you're squeamish at all, I would steer clear. Overall, I did like this game, and as someone that almost never likes games like this, it came as sort of a surprise. So I don't know, maybe grab it on sale or something? If you're looking for a short cinematic experience dripping with atmosphere that has some pretty clever shakeups, check it out. If you're not, you probably already knew that. This game isn't the one that's going to change your mind on this particular genre. Alright, I gotta go think of more nun jokes. Doom Profit out. How do you